Hello everybody, my name is King Noosme, a channel that's known for keeping you safe against weird, creepy, two-headed monsters. Unless you think about it for some reason, so just don't think about it. And before anything else happens in this video, I want to thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. That is incredibly insane in my brain. I want to remind you guys, I had a little more than 500 subscribers last November. It's all been pretty crazy for me. But yes, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you guys so much. So as celebration, I put up a poll asking you guys if you guys want to see me finally talk about the Haunting Hour movie or a community live stream thing where we just hang out and celebrate me getting 10,000. And you guys don't like me, apparently. You guys don't want me to stream for you guys. That's fine. No, it's fine. I didn't want to do it anyways. I didn't want to do it anyways. I, I didn't want to like hang out with you guys or nothing. It's fine. No, it's cool. I'm like, I'm not even upset about it or anything. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, I talk about the Haunting Hour TV show a lot. And not a lot of you guys know that there is actually a Haunting Hour movie that came out a long time before the show came out. And fun fact, I actually actually found the show when I was trying to look for the movie to do the movie as like a Halloween special for my channel last year. And it used to be one of my favorite Halloween movies. And the movie is based off of a book with the same name, because of course it is, that went straight to DVD on September 4th in 2007. But it aired on Cartoon Network just three days later on September 7th, which is where I watched the movie for the first time. And just like some episodes in the TV show, this movie is stacked full of stars. It stars Emily Osment, our main character, Cassie, and she was on a small little known TV show on Disney Channel called Hannah Montana, and she was just the, the side character best friend. You know, just a little underground show maybe you guys didn't know about. And Brittany Curran, who is in a lot of stuff, but I know her from being London Tipton's best friend in Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and Sweet Life on Deck. Cody Lindley, who was like the blonde dude of the early 2000s. If you needed a cute blonde guy in your movie, he was the guy. He was in tons of things like the movie Hoot, Cheaper by the Dozen, and of course Hannah Montana as Miley's on and off boyfriend. And finally, the biggest W this movie could have ever gotten, Tobin Bell. And if you don't know who Tobin Bell is, he is Jigsaw. The scary movie Saw, he is the main antagonist in those movies. It's so crazy that he's in this movie. All right, that's enough yapping. Let's get into the movie. The movie starts in this pitch black room with these totally terrifying, not bought from Walmart store decorations. And this whole intro sequence lasts Lasts a little too long in my opinion. A full two minutes and 45 seconds. Come on, just get on with the movie. Maybe I have ADHD because when I was watching this, that felt like an eternity. I was like, this is the longest intro sequence ever. Next, we get to see a little boy sleeping in his room until something opens his closet door. Scared, he calls for his mom, which is her fourth time coming to check on him. Third. Even the dad is annoyed that they had to come check on him for the fifth time. Third. And he tells his parents about the closet door. He's staring at me. Oh. Never mind. So the dad just turns him around. Now I can't tell what he's thinking. Really, kid? You're definitely going to be cool when you're older. And the parents try to do everything he says to help him get some sleep. But by the end of it, his dad just promises, if you go to bed, I'll buy you a video game you want. As long as he doesn't call them back into his room for the rest of the night. He agrees and goes back to sleep. Well, he tries to at least. The door slowly keeps creaking open more and more until finally the boy is brave enough to just get up out of bed and go investigate himself. He slowly approaches the door and a monster grabs him. Oh, never mind. It was just his sister and our main character, Cassie. And her little brother's name is Max. Cassie just got payback because apparently her little brother destroyed her DVD player. No more games for you. The parents come to check on him once again, and this is when we learn that they have just moved to this town. And that's why her brother is acting like Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> Obviously, Cassie gets in trouble for scaring her brother, and then she kind of alludes to her parents favoring him over her, especially since the move. Why is everything always about him? She storms to her room when we get a clip of a creepy man watching her from their mailbox. I hope he's not there for like malicious reasons. Cassie catches a glimpse of him while she's walking past the window, but when she looks again, he's gone. The next day, Cassie goes to school when we learn that she has absolutely no friends. Literally, absolutely no friends, zero friends. Nobody even talks to her. But we do see she has a little crush on somebody and he's a bit of an idiot. <laughs> His friend pulls a prank on him, like the old pin shocker prank on him, and then he just 
keeps doing it over and over again. Maybe he's a closeted emo. Anyways, his name is Sean, and we're going to be seeing a whole lot more of him. And next, we have the pleasure of meeting Priscilla. I wonder what cliche role she's going to fill in this movie. And she's gunning to be Pumpkin Queen at the school's Halloween dance, and I mean, best of luck to her. Mm -hmm. Luck. Okay, asshole, I'm not gonna be nice to you anymore. And obviously, since she's the Regina George of this dimension, she has to go to the dance with the hottest guy at school. But wait, Cassie likes the hot guy. That's not fair. Sean and his friends sit near Cassie at lunch, and Sean starts complaining about this book that he chose he has to write a report on. And he has to do good on it, or... My dad's not gonna let me play ball. <laughs> no, not ball. Your dad won't let you play ball. What will we do without ball? Okay, I'm gonna stop making fun of the cliches in this movie because it just gets a lot worse from here. Cassie overhears him talking about the paper and she speaks up and offers to help him because she's read all of Edgar Allan Poe's work. And check out the riz she uses to get him interested. Poe, of course, is a seminal figure in horror literature. He was a master at creating the intense atmosphere of poetic dread. Obviously, there's too much riz going on, so Priscilla has to put a stop to it before Cassie takes her man. And she just walks up and rudely interrupts their conversation and takes Cassie's tutoring job and the man. And we'll talk about it more at the dance if you'll take me. Sure, okay. Great, okay. Pick me up at seven. Don't be late. Jesus, my man barely said yes. And she decides to pour more salt in the wound by turning around and just making fun of Cassie for no reason. Didn't anyone tell you? The Halloween dance isn't until next Friday. Listen here, you little bitch. She's a child. She's a child. I can't call her that. She's a child. And she does this right before Cassie embarrasses herself anyways. Leave it. It's an improvement. Okay, somebody get this girl before I do. Somebody get her. And now that that scene is over, I can tell you guys that there is no music in this scene at all. And it's insanely quiet to be a lunchroom. If you've ever been in a high school lunchroom before, you know that it's probably the loudest place on earth. Like everybody knows it starts with like concerts, and then it goes up to standing next to a jet engine, and then high school lunchroom. That's the hierarchy. That's how it works. After her bad day at school, Cassie decides that she's just going to go ahead and go to her local library. But on the way, her parents inform her that she's going to have to take her little brother trick-or-treating on Halloween night. What? That's my favorite night of the year. Which she is obviously thrilled about. And on her way to the library, she spots a store that she's never seen before. Which isn't too shocking because she just moved to this town, so I guess that would make sense. But it's also down the skinniest and smallest alley I've ever seen in my life. She goes inside to find that it's filled with spooky things like clown statues, skeletons, the Hamburglar, and a noose that's waiting on its next victim. And she has a lot of fun looking around until... May I help you? Whoa! I actually did not see him there. And the man asks Cassie... It's fun to scare people, isn't it? Which she lies and says no. And he notices that she's carrying a lot of books and offers to show her the book section. And she... Actually, I have to go. Oh, she has to leave. But you can't escape the... What was his name again? Oh, he doesn't have a name. Awesome. He shows her the section with the books. This is the book section? He shows her the section with the book. And when Cassie picks it up, she sees that it's locked. And the mysterious man tells her that the only way to open it is if she buys it to get the key. Which she does. But there's no price label on it, so she just offers... Five dollars? Sold. Damn, he really needed that fiver. Then he promptly kicks her out of the store. While she's standing outside, she decides to open the book and check it out. But right as she unlocks the book, a crazy storm just starts brewing. And we can't really see anything inside the book, but we do see the first page says, Don't read out loud. And the next day at school, they announce the Pumpkin Queen. Shouldn't they do that, like, at the dance? Isn't that the point of the dance? The winner and new Pumpkin Queen is... Priscilla Wright! <laughs> And a jealous Cassie asks the lunch lady, what's so special about being Pumpkin Queen? And the nice lunch lady tells her that it's just a tradition that the Pumpkin Queen gets to hit this big pinata at the dance. And this gives Cassie an idea. Later that day at home, Cassie gets a few packages for the dance. And we get to see that her brother is also scared of the video game he wanted his parents to buy him. And it might be a horror game, right? No, this is what the game looks like. <laughs> Somebody should like strap him down and just make him watch Resident Evil 7 gameplay. That'd be the funniest shit ever. That night at the dance, Cassie goes through with her plan. She heads backstage and fills the pinata with something mysterious out of the containers. And Priscilla gets crowned pumpkin queen in front of the whole school and gets to smash the pumpkin. <laughs> Good lord, it's cardboard, not steel. Just hit the thing. 
to reveal Cassie filled the pinata with hundreds and hundreds of roaches. I thought it was gonna be like a, a carry situation for a second there. I thought it was gonna be full of blood, but the blood comes later. And she totally embarrasses Priscilla in front of the whole school. <laughs> And the next day, people at school make fun of Priscilla all day long, calling her cockroach queen and drawing all over these posters she put all over the school. It's finally Halloween day and Cassie is telling the class the history of Halloween. And as she's doing this, Priscilla convinces Sean to grab her diary. But instead of grabbing her diary, he accidentally grabs the book, which she quickly reads and then shoves it back in her bag. Did these idiots not notice that that's not a diary? It doesn't even look like a diary. It's Halloween night and after a quick scene of Cassie trying to convince her brother to walk to a house, but he was too scared because it had spooky music. Cassie just gives up on him and walks home, which makes her brother very mad because obviously that is the only house in the whole entire neighborhood that had his favorite candy. And you want to know what that candy is? Wax lips. Wax lips. Wait, did you see them? I'm going to make sure you see them. I'm going to say it again. Wax lips. And it makes you wonder, has he tried like a, um, any other candy ever? Anyways, they both come back home mad at each other and Cassie's mom wonders what it'll take for them to get along. I don't know what it will take to get you to be nice to your brother. A miracle? She then asks Cassie to put this roast in the fridge and, uh... Oh yeah, try to get along with her brother. The parents leave for a party and we see Sean and Priscilla sitting across the street planning revenge for what she did at the Halloween dance. Does he still have that stupid pin? Next we get a little peek into Sean's personality. Sean doesn't want to go through with the plan because he thinks it's too mean. But Priscilla just threatens to not do his paper anymore and he's too stupid to write it himself so he just complies. I can think, I'm not stupid. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean that bro, I was just saying it for the script. Back inside, Cassie is writing a paper when her brother Max comes in and asks her to read him a story and he decides to to choose the scary book that she bought but she just simply says no it's too scary and offers to read him a berenstain bears instead i hate those stupid bears hey you watch your mouth he then accidentally steps on her computer's power strip turning it off which cassie what did you do isn't very happy about and for revenge she decides to read him the scary book i want to remind you guys this book says don't read out loud. So she's gonna do it anyways. And the book reads, The evil thing is a gruesome beast. On living flesh, it loves to feast. It's a two-headed thing that you don't wish to greet. One head sucks your blood, the other chews your meat. It carries its babies in slimy eggs on its back. The babies are hungry when they hatch for a snack. So the evil thing traps some poor victim alive for the babies to eat when their birthday arrives. But don't worry, don't cry. Please don't have a fit. The evil thing's not real, unless you think about it. Don't think about it. Good night. Hey, she scared him on purpose. And Max has a very hard time not thinking about the evil thing. I well, now he's screwed. It comes crying to Cassie and then she just has to convince him that it's just a book, the evil thing's not real. And it takes some convincing, but he eventually believes her. But outside we see a gust of wind making a tornado out of leaves that lead to a bigger pile of them, which reveals... Maybe the book wasn't so fictional after all. Next, we get to see a pizza guy and he's just doing his job. He's trying to get to the next house when his car starts shaking and it looks like something's walking around it outside. But his windows are too foggy so we can't see exactly what's outside until... Whoa, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And sadly, the pizza boy is not gonna make it home tonight. Wow, did they really murder a dude in the middle of a kid's movie? And as Cassie is typing her paper, we get a POV shot of the evil thing slowly getting closer and closer to her house. When suddenly, something turns their power off. Cassie and Max go outside to investigate and turn the power box back on when they start hearing creepy noises coming from the woods, which makes Max super freaked out. Get me, let's go, let's get it, get it, get it, let's go, come on. Which made me want to punt him across the world to Atlantis. And Cassie tries to look around and find out where this noise is coming from when... After a second of her screaming and freaking out, we see that it's just a Halloween decoration. And we see that it's just the prank that Priscilla and Sean set up to scare Cassie and sadly it worked. And she recorded the whole thing, which is gonna ruin Cassie's reputation at school. And we see that Sean is really a nice person because he's checking on Max and telling him that it's all just a prank so he wouldn't be too scared. And he tries to make Cassie feel better too. I would have been scared too. The kids go back inside where Cassie pretty much orders Max to go back in bed. And as he's walking up the stairs, we hear, the back door creaks open and it looks like something's made its way inside. Max heads to bed, but he's obviously still scared. But this time he has a reason to be scared because 
Cassie isn't behind the door this time. Go to sleep, you big baby. Max hides under his bed as the monster slowly wanders around his room and eventually finds him. Priscilla and Sean are at a park watching the video of Cassie getting scared over and over and over again. And luckily for Cassie, Sean is a good guy. And he takes the tape out of the camera, which pisses Priscilla off. If you don't put that tape in my hand right this instant, I will not write your term paper. And she once again threatens to not write his term paper if he doesn't give it back. But Sean just replies with, I don't care. But what about Paul? Sean storms off, leaving Priscilla alone in the park. Well, I say alone, but... She's not really alone. She thinks it's Sean trying to Uno reverse the prank on her, but we see that it's not Sean. Sean does hear her screaming a lot, but he just blows it off that she's trying to make him feel bad. Such a bad actress. But after a few more screams, his morals won't let him just walk away. And he walks back to see yeah, you probably should have ignored it, buddy. He runs all the way back to Cassie's house and pretty much breaks the door down trying to get in. And when Cassie finally answers the door, she doesn't believe a thing he's telling her. She even cracks a joke when he tells her that her brother has been taken by this monster. Well, can't be, because this is my brother right here. And Priscilla. Well, I guess it's not totally evil. <laughs> that one was kind of funny, though. When he finally just tells her to go check on her brother and see if he's actually sleeping, which he isn't. And they find some monster goo on the window seal, which instantly makes her believe her brother was taken. And she just instantly comes to the conclusion that we have to kill that thing. Damn, I guess family really does have your back. We see that the monster has made a little home in the sewers of the city. This is where it stores its food. And we finally get a good look at the monster. Whoa, that thing is scary. Cassie and Sean follow the goo through the park and through the woods to find the evil thing's new lair. And I'm starting to think Sean is a little smarter than we give him credit for because he notices that they're not really armed well enough to fight this thing. Are you sure your dad doesn't have a shotgun or something? And as they're walking through the woods, Sean tries to decipher Cassie and figure out why she is the way she is in a kind of a flirty way. Yeah, but you're nasty. Smooth, Sean. Oh, he's talking about the sewer drain. They venture inside the hole and they follow the goo on the walls for a, a full three minutes of the movie, which is like 15 minutes in their time. Look, I said I thought I had ADHD. That felt like an eternity for me. But when they do find the room and they find Max, they are terrified at what they see. And I would be too, I'm not gonna lie. They try their best to break Max out, but... Looks like they're a little too late. And like the badass she is, Cassie hits the monster on the head. Wait a minute, I thought the story said they had two heads. I was right! Luckily they find a small hallway to fit into so the monster can't chase them and they can escape. Jesus Christ, that actually got me! And on their way out, Sean gets grabbed by the monster. But luckily for him, he has his feel-good pin on him. The shocking one. Not the elf bar or jewel or vibrator. Anyways, he shocks the evil thing. <laughs> How many volts is in that thing to cause the evil thing that much pain? There's no way that pin hurts that much, right? Cassie tells Sean about the mysterious man in the store and how he might have an idea of how to defeat it. But when they get to the store, there's nobody inside. But he isn't far. Cassie tries to stop him and ask him for help, but he just says, Sorry, no refund. Then he turns full evil villain and then talks about how great it would be to see her brother's face as he's about to be eaten alive by this monster's babies. It's a little dark for a kid's movie, don't you think? Cassie tries to get him to sell her something to defeat the monster from the store. Store? What store? but the store mysteriously disappears. And finally, after a bit of bickering and Tobin Bell giving too good of a performance for a straight to DVD movie, the mysterious man leaves her with a short riddle. Two heads are better than one. That's the way to get the bloody job done. The kids try to decipher the riddle, but they have no idea what it means. They don't know if he means that they can defeat it if they work together, or if the monster is just automatically stronger than them because it has two heads, which wouldn't be good for them. Unless they fought each other. Oh, so now the kids just have to figure out a way to get the heads to fight each other. So what do they need for a bloody job? Blood? Oh, blood, blood. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. Next, we get a quick scene of the evil thing, and it looks like the babies are here. The kids run to Cassie's house, and they, and I shit you not, ring out the roast for all the blood inside of it, which I'm pretty sure you could maybe do that and get a little bit of blood, but there is no possible way you got this much blood out of that thing. The jar is as big as the roast, and surprisingly, Sean comes up with another pretty decent plan. They're just gonna lure the evil thing towards them, throw the blood on it, and then hope they start fighting each other. That's really smart. I know. 
I don't know what's gotten into me. He has gotten suspiciously smart lately. Maybe that pin is sending shockwaves to his brain and it's just making him smarter every time he presses it. Cut back to the monster's lair and we get a even better look at the babies. They kind of remind me of like the little leech worm things from the movie Slither. Except for these guys just have like a face. Anyways, we watch as the babies slowly slither <laughs> towards their victims. The little freaks latch onto Max's cocoon first and start biting it to try to get inside. Man, they're really going at it. But before Max can be devoured, Cassie and Sean make it to the lair and they use a radio to play the spooky noises that Sean and Priscilla were using earlier to lure the evil thing towards them. And it surprisingly works. The monster walks all the way up to the radio and uh oh. Hey, it's okay. They just have to pour the blood onto the monster. Come on, guys. You had one thing to do. One thing. You just dropped blood on it. That's all you needed to do. But luckily for them, Max accidentally kills one of the babies and he escapes. And this doesn't make the evil thing any more happy with him. And this is when Cassie and Sean yell at him to pick up the blood and throw it at it. But of course, I'm scared. he's too scared. And he refuses to do it until I love you, Max. You can do it. Cassie gives him the confidence he needs to do it. And he does in fact throw the blood on the monster. And the plan works beautifully. The monster literally eats itself out of existence. and yellow blood splatters everywhere. And they set Priscilla free and she's actually pretty calm and thankful for <gasps> She's a witch! Yeah, I lied. And she threatens to sue Cassie for some reason. I don't know how any of this is gonna hold up in court. And then orders Sean to go with her. But Sean is now a man and he realizes that he likes goth girls. I think I'll walk Cassie home. Oh, and the pizza guy's here too. And he's pretty cool. He gives the kids a free pizza. The kids make it home and they take the book and throw it in a fire where it belongs. But midnight hits and it's time for Sean to go home. Cassie decides to walk him out, but before he leaves, she offers to tutor him, which he obviously accepts. But before he walks out, he says, stay weird which would normally be used as an insult, but in this case, it's quite sweet. And the parents finally come home to find the kids sleeping in the same bed, and they decide to spend some alone time together. And this is when the dad finds the book in the fireplace and pulls it out of the fire. And then he promptly reads it out loud again. And the movie ends with the closet door slowly creaking open and the mysterious man saying, Happy Halloween. <laughs> then we get a sick song from Emily Osment. Did we get an okay song from Emily Osment? And that's how the movie ends. Classic R.L. Stein twist cliffhanger ending. I just want to say that the monster design and practical effects in this movie are so good to be a straight to DVD movie. It's, it looks amazing. The monster design is actually really scary. Even the little babies gave me the heebie jeebies, but it was really cool. I really enjoyed all of it. And watching some of the scenes made me wonder how this got away with being a kid's movie. I'm not complaining. I liked it a lot as a kid. That being said, it's not a good movie, but it is a very fun movie to watch. And my friend Matt Neff at FUDW actually has a pretty fun idea. I only do this if you're over 21, of course. It's a drinking game with every time Papa John's is on screen, you take a shot. I'm going to add every time Deer Park Water is on screen, you take a shot. And you could also do every time Max says, I'm scared, you take a shot, because that kid says it at least 70 times in this fucking movie. I don't know, just a fun little game idea if you and your friends want to watch a goofy ass movie around Halloween time and have some fun drinking. There you go. And this is not the only R.L. Stein movies like this. He has another set of movies, minus the Goosebumps one. Everybody knows about the Goosebumps movies. Mostly Ghostly and Spooksville. They're also R.L. Stein movies. So let me know if you want to see me talk about some of those on my channel. Once again, thank you so much for 10k subscribers. I cannot believe I've made this goal. It's all thanks to you guys. Like the video if you like the video. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. I appreciate you all and peace. <laughs>